Hey, welcome to 3 Minutes or Less, where we try to see if we can learn something in 3 Minutes or Less. Today, it's Lilith, that badass baddie, the OG Jezebel and She-Devil. Or was she? Part 1. We're going way back to her origins. There is much debate about Lilith, some even wondering if she ever really existed at all. It's always good to look at a word's beginnings to get an idea of the history. Lilith started in Mesopotamia religion as Lila or Lilu or Lilut. In the Arcadian dialect, these were words for spirits, diseased spirits, diseased male spirits. Sumerian Lilu meant night. Together, they talked of a bad night male spirit. Even in ancient Hebrew, the word Lilit referred to spirits. Although the God of Abraham deemed these spirits female, Lilith meaning multiple female spirits, and Lulu meaning male spirit. It isn't until well after the birth of Christ that the words even appear in Judaism and then in separate sects or cults of the religion. In the ancient Hebrew text of the Bible, the only mention of Lilith comes in a listing of animals and Lilith was thought to be a night bird or an owl. In the search for understanding where the idea of a child-stealing she-devil comes from, scholars referred to Gilgamesh and to the Arslantash amulet. However, recent scholars have decided that these are not good sources for this study at all, that the texts really don't depict a Lilith as we know her today. There just is no relation between the Lilith of today and the Lilith of Mesopotamian texts that were just diseased male spirits. Let's jump ahead a little bit. Jewish folklore began telling short myths called historiolas about a she-devil, Lilith, well after the birth of Christ around 800 AD. She was mentioned mostly in plays and as satire. Her most endearing story being the one that Lilith was created at the same time as Adam with the same clay to be Adam's wife. But Lilith would not be submissive. She walked away from the Garden of Eden and hooked up with Archangel Samuel. Her unruly and lustful behavior proof of her evil. It's a huge leap from generic male diseased spirit to child-eating promiscuous mistress of Satan, but here we are. In part two, we're going to talk about her role in more modern times, kind of bring us all up to date. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me what you think down in the comments, and stay tuned for part two. It's three minutes or less, and this is part two of Lilith's story. Lilith, the she-devil turned feminist icon. C.S. Lewis' book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the White Witch was a descendant of the Jewish folklore Lilith. Adam's first wife, the unruly raven-haired promiscuous demon that tried to steal Adam's rightful children. And C.S. Lewis got his inspiration from another novel written in 1895 by George MacDonald, simply titled Lilith. The Victorian era saw a rise in all things horror and demon. Ghost stories, Poe, foreboding and creepy, Victoria people loved it all. Lilith played directly onto that stage, being both beautiful and grotesque, a theory often repeated in fantasy art and literature. Lilith's gorgeous succubus, the one who lured hapless people into her web with charm and elegance or scared them with the demonic powers and monstrosities. In 1887, Rossetti's Lady Lilith appeared. This shows us a fair-haired lady surrounded in glorious nature with a world of wisdom in her eyes, a history of women being demonized for having ambition or sexuality. Beware of her, fair hair, for she excels all women in the magic of her locks, and when she twines them around a young man's neck, she will not ever set him free again. That's a quote paired with a painting from Faust. Now the little of, of Gilgamesh, the harlot, who stole and ate babies, the screeching demon, softened to a world-weary temptress, exercising the only power allowed to her, sex. And that idea comes directly from the Jewish folklores of Lilith. Her refusal to lay beneath Adam, leading to her escaping the garden, God sent three angels to retrieve her and found her in a cave with many offspring. The angels killed a hundred of her children every day she refused to return. But when she did return, Adam had another mate, Eve. 
It's not hard to see why so many women, both past and present, find in her story a kindred. Not in the demon that the folklore tried to make her out to be, but in the tragedy of a life misunderstood, a strength and yearning for independence turned against her, the harsh punishment for trying to stand up for herself and wanting freedom. Every turn of the tale has a modern feminist aching for a woman so horribly misunderstood. What changed? I would say women learned to read and write, learned to question the duplicity of men, the forced yoke of male and female traditional marriage. Some women still revel in her darkness, a touch of power perhaps, in a world that still paints strong women as evil or hideous. Some, like myself, brush away the darkness and only see a soul sister, someone who paid so dearly for just wanting freedom and for trying to stand up for herself. Tell me what you think down in the comments. What Lilith attracts you?